Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Based on the time you are assessing this material, welcome to coolchats.com. And this is the course, Information and Communication Technology. If you are assessing this video on YouTube, this is a course taught on coolchats.com. So you can visit coolchat.com so that you can see the content of the course. Now, if, if you're on coolchat.com, I'll be taking you through DHS 1, Junior High School 1. So this is a course you'll be taking. Now, you can access the course on the front page if it is among the popular courses. Other than that, you can as well access the course by going through courses then DHS. So once you click on DHS, then you can see the information and communication technology for DHS one course. And you can just click on it to start or take the course. Okay. So today I'll be taking you to ICT for VHS1. So you just click on it. So welcome to Information and Communication Technology for GHS one course. My name is Godwin Ashon, and I'm the one who will be taking you to this course. Now, since this is the first week, I will introduce myself. So this course is for all GHS one students. You don't need any prerequisites to take this course. Then by the end of the course, you should be able to acquire some proficiency in the use of ICT tools. You should be able to use ICT as a tool for learning other subjects. And you should be able to acquire business skills needed for the ICT job market. So by the end of the course for GHS 1 and GHS 2 and GHS 3, so by the, end, by the time you complete all the those courses, you should be able to uh, handle certain things like secretarial works, where you can type, you can visit the internet, you can access it, you can do documentation, you can do research, etc. on the internet. So basically, that's the aim of the ICT course. So welcome to information and communication technology. And what are we going to study for this week? This is our first week. And the course outline, we are supposed to be able to define what a data is. We should be able to define what is information. We should be able to explain the information processing cycle. And we should be able to explain how the computer transforms data into information. So if you feed the computer with data, how is it going to trans uh, process that data to produce information? Then we discuss the devices used by the computer at every stage of information processes so this is what we are going to discuss today so when you click on the cap it shows the content for that week okay so before you can start to learn about a computer you need to understand the basics of how computers work so if you know the basic of how computers work, you'll be able to understand your computer and you should be able to also understand what uh, process certain uh, uh, things go through so that if you are troubled, you are trying to troubleshoot something or you are doing something, you should be able to understand what is going on in the computer. So I'm going to zoom 
the content so you can see the content a little bit bigger okay so all computers whether they are the smartphone your hand or large your uh, powerful servers operate on the same basic principles and this is what we are going to uh, consider today the principle okay so these are inputs processing storage and output so these are the four uh, uh, principles that uh, your computers work on so the computer gets an input it process the input then it display the outcome or the output of the, uh, the process so when you process it the outcome of it which we later on come to know what is the outcome of processing the data then it will display it then if you decide to store it then as well as store that information which came out of the data so what is data and what is information so data is defined as raw material or unorganized fact. So if you have a fact, it can be a text, it can be numbers, it can be image, it can be any material which is not organized. So once it's been organized to put meaning into it, to make it more meaningful to the one who is receiving it, then it becomes an information. So to illustrate this, this is a data, it's just some numbers or you can see five, 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 one, two, three, seven, seven, nine, eight. Now anyone who sees this will just see it as number, a data. So now when this data or numbers have been arranged in order to uh, become meaningful, then you count an uh, information. So for example, these numbers are grouped the these same numbers are grouped in this way. So we have five five in bracket, then one, two, three, then that seven, seven, nine, eight. So now this same number have been grouped to form a, a full number. So now once you see that this you realize that this is a full number. And now you can put many into the same numbers that you are seeing it. Okay. So inform uh, information is meaningful. But data is just a raw material, so it's not organized, so it's not useful, or so it's not meaningful. But once you organize it and put meaning into it, then it becomes an information. So this is data and this is information. With this one, we can understand what it is. We can all know that this is a full number. And this is just a raw data which it has not been arranged so you don't know that this is a phone number but once it's been arranged to organize in a correct format then you can it, the outcome will be the phone number which is an information which become meaningful to you the one who is reading so what are the differences between the data and information so a data is a collection of facts so a collection of facts is called a data. Now, information is how you understand those parts in context. So, if those data or facts are been organized in order for you to understand, um, for it to become meaningful to you, then that become an information. So, a data is unorganized. So, it has not been organized, but an information is organized. In order for it to be meaningful to you. Now, a data is not typically useful on its own. So, normally, if you have a data, it's not uh, useful on its own. You have to process it into information before it becomes useful. So, information is useful, data is not useful on its own. Now, data generally includes the raw forms of numbers, statements, and characters. So the raw form of it, which is been the raw meat has not been processed. So numbers, 
statement characters image in there which has not been processed then they are better but once they have been processed then they become information so data is raw information is not now information depends on data so without data there is no information the information also depends on data so in the uh, computer when you talk of data so the input you feed to the computer is what we call data now when you do something by uh, for example if you press the mouse or you, pr you uh, press the key those ones are what you call the input which will later come to know now when these things are being processed for the computer to put memory into that then you get that information which is being displayed on the on the screen so information is the output or how the computer interprets your data and so should the requested action or directive so if you, uh, you input something the computer will uh, process it so once it process, it gives you a feedback, which is the output which you see, so that you know what is happening in the computer. Okay. So the next step is information processing cycle. So once you have your data, the process or the steps or the sequence of events that it goes through in order for the data to be turned into an information, it's what we call information processing cycle so like it says information processing is a process of changing or converting converting information into meaningful information okay then it is process categorized or classified data which is useful to the receiver so you process or you classify or you categorize your data then you make it useful to the user which is the outcome is the information now once it's been, it's been useful then that is an information so the process of converting the data into an information is what we call the information processing cycle okay so the step that data must follow to become useful information is known as information processing cycle so the step that the data must go through in order for the data to be changed into an information which is useful to the user so the user will be able to understand it because it can become meaningful and useful now there are four phases of uh, information processing cycle so phases in other terms and the steps it goes through four steps now the first step is the input where the computer receives the data or instruction okay so for example as you can see the cursor okay as you can see the cursor on the screen now first the mouse as the mouse the mouse is, is moved so as the mouse moved it feed the computer with the data so the computer interpreted the, the that event and process it then based on what you are doing and the outcome that you are going to see on the screen so once you move to the left the computer receives it then it display the outcome so that you can see that okay you are moving to the left or i'm moving to the right i'm moving to the left i'm moving to the top i'm moving to the bottom or i'm moving to the right okay so your movement by the or by the mouse is input so you are feeding the computer with that then the computer takes that data that input data then process it now once it processes it, it gives you the outcome. So the outcome is what is being displayed on the monitor that the mouse move to this side. Okay. If you move it to the top, you move the mouse 
the movement of the mouse is the input so you feed the computer with that movement so the computer gets that data then it processes that data and it gives you the outcome which is the mouse moving to where you, you are moving your mouse to then so uh, from inputs which is feeding the computer with data then we, uh, we that, that data will be processed by the computer which is organized it will organize the data into information now once it turns into an information then this will be displayed on the screen so that will be an output now once there is an output you can decide to either save if the certain output you can decide to either save or not so that is a, a fourth uh, step so first the computer receives data and input from the user now the computer will process what that uh, data is about so it will process it so once it processes it it needs to give you an output a feedback so that output is what we call the information so you put in your data it's being processed by the computer then gives you an output which is the information now if you want to save that information then you can save so that's where the storage comes in so for example to use uh, this to illustrate now I believe you've seen a barcode reader before if you go to the uh, supermarket if you've ever been to the supermarket they have what they call a barcode reader so it's a device that is uh, pointed to a, co a barcode a barcode is just a line which uh, is a graphical representation of uh, a, a value most often is a product ID which is a, yeah, it's being represented in the graphical way as a barcode okay so the barcode reader it takes in that data it takes in that data then it fits that data into the computer so based on that image of uh, the what is written on the product it will convert that image it will process it into the actual number of the product then that will also be processed so uh, there can be maybe if it's a product you are buying once it's been scanned the product number is extracted then it will be added to the items you bought so there will be a list of them and there will be total or sum so that you know the total items you bought for you to pay so once that has been processed then it will also be outputted by printing it on the receipt so that you can see the total amount for you to pay so the, the, that one will be the output so this is the information you get from it now this process data can be stored so it can be stored on the computer or a server somewhere so that is the fourth step okay so this is step one input second input this step two processing the input and this step three giving the output then step four if uh, the computer decides to save it then it stores that uh, process information okay so here the barcode reader is an input device so it takes it scans uh, the barcode so the barcode contains uh, numbers in a graphical way so once it scans it's been extracted and processed then you do the particular product number then the uh, computer process that data and the output is uh, printed out to be given out for the user to understand what is uh, happening okay so we'll be taking them one after the other so now we are on input so we are on the input side after input we will talk about the processing uh, stage 
then we also talk about the output stage. And once we are done with the outputs, then we also briefly talk about the storage. Okay. So the input that's entering data into the computer. Entering data into the computer. So it says feeding the collected raw data or data entry in the form of numbers, text, images, and sound into the computer for processing. So if you feeding the computer with the numbers, text images, and sound. Okay, so for example, if you have the microphone, okay, so the microphone is an input device, but once you speak into it, the sound will be extracted. Okay, so then it will be fed into the computer, and the computer will process the sound. So for example, if you have an application for recording your voice, okay, so the microphone will extract your voice, then the the computer will process that and store it somewhere. So later on when you click on play, then that sound can be played to you in the form of uh, outputs and come to see it's an output device because the, the voice will come out from your uh, from the speaker and the, the voice will, will get into the computer through the microphone. So that's input. Okay, so it's like you are feeding the computer with your voice. And the device which is used to do that is the microphone. Okay, so feeding the computer with the data can be done either by numbers or a text or images and sound. Now, input can be done by utilizing input devices such as keyboards, mouse, scanners, barcode readers joysticks, digital data tablets, electronic cash registers, microphones, web cameras, digital camera, touch screens, and light pen. So we've seen each of these uh, images so that you know what it's talking about. So the keyboards, I believe you have a keyboard in your lab. If not, this is how the keyboard looks like. So this is how a computer keyboard looks like. So with this keyboard, you can input uh, data into the uh, computer. So for example, if you press C, it's an input you are giving to the computer. So that press, so far as the uh, keyboard is connected to the computer and the computer is on, the computer will uh, receive that input. So it will process it and based on what you are doing, gives you a particular output. Okay. Now, after keyboard, then we have the uh, mouse. So the same with the mouse. As you move around, when you right click, you left click, all these ones are input. You are feeding the computer with those inputs. So once you do that, the computer will also process that input and gives you an output. So for example, this is an image. Now, if you are browsing, this is an internet. So later on, I think in one of either JHS2 or JHS3, you will learn about the internet. I think it will be JHS3. You will learn about the internet in the week one. So with that one, we talk about browsing the internet. But so far as if you are accessing this material on cool charts, which is uh, available on the internet it means you have an idea what the internet is about. Okay, so on a browser for an image, you can decide to save an image. Okay, so if I want to save an image, I will right click on the mouse. So that right click is an uh, a data. Okay, it's an input. It's an input I'm feeding to the machine, or to the computer. Okay, so if I right click here, I've put, uh, uh, given an input to the machine. So the machine processed that input and brought out this, uh, output. So I know what is going on. Okay. So now, as you can see, when I'm moving, I'm still feeding the computer with an input. Okay. So once I feed it, the computer processes it and gives me an output. So if I want to copy the image, when I click here, the computer will process it. 
then it gives an output. If I want to save it, the, when I click here, for example, like this, the computer will process that input, then gives this output. So I can continue with the next step and I can save it to wherever I want to save it to. Okay. So that, that's it. So the mouse is an input device. The keyboard is an input device. Then we also have the joystick. So those are two love playing games. So the joystick is also an input device. We can press on some of these bot uh, buttons. Then there will be movement of your uh, characters. So if you are working with an avatar, so your movement will also uh, move your avatar. And so based on what you press and what uh, uh, how that data will be processed and then our output will be giving you to see what is going on. Okay, so that you know that that uh, that uh, button you click, the computer is going to process it, give you an output which will be useful. So that I know that oh yes, when I press the, this side, this is what happened. When I press on this button, this is what happened. Those ones are the outputs you are getting. The present is the input. The computer process that data. Then it gives you an output on the screen. Then you know what is happening. So that's the joystick for those of you who love games. This is used to play the game. Then we have the barcode reader that we talk about. So in the shops or inventory management, they have the barcode reader. Okay. So once you have it, either a barcode or a QR, uh, QR code uh, reader, any of those. So they are all input devices. So they read the image on the product. Then once it's being fed to the computer, the computer process that data. So process that image and put meaning into it. So once it put meaning, they get that information. Then once it, that information is also processed and we display on the screen. So we have the barcode reader also being an input device. We have the joystick also being an input device. We have the mouse also being an input device. Then we have the keyboard also being an input device. So by now you should be able to split uh, some of these input devices. You should be able to define what a data is. We say a data is a raw uh, material on organized uh, information. Now, unorganized uh, material is a raw material. Unorganized material is what we call the uh, data. Once you organize it to put meaning into it, to make it more meaningful to the receiver, it becomes an information. Okay. And the process or the steps of converting the data, which is the raw material, into a meaningful or useful information, which is the information, the steps of doing that is what we call the information processing cycle. Then you said the cycle is in four steps or four phases. First, the comp you need to uh, uh, feed the computer with a data okay and the feeding of computer by data is done by the input devices so we have the input so you input the data the computer and the second step is that the computer will process the data okay so based on the type of inputs you feed to the computer and the processing okay so later on we'll see how the, this process is done so once the process has been done then you need to uh, convert that uh, data into an information. And once the information is there, it means that it's useful to the user. So we can display so that the user will understand what that data which was passed is all about. Then to be displayed on the screen or any other uh, output uh, device, like printing it out on the paper, etc. Okay. Then we also have the scanner, are also being an input device. So if you haven't seen the scanner before, so an image is placed on this part. Okay. 
So this input device will scan what is on the surface of the picture. So it will extract it and feed it to the computer. So once it feeds to the computer, the computer will process it and save it as a digital uh, format of that image, which will no longer be in the form of a paper. It's going to be in a soft copy where the copy can be viewed on the computer. Later on, if the person wants to print it, the person can print it. If the person wants to read it, the person can read it. Okay, so in the scanning, you can either scan as an image or you can scan as a PDF for a document. So those uh, feeding the surface of your paper, which is the, that's what we call the scanning. So the difference between the scanning and the uh, copy, uh, copy is that well, for a copy, you are making a copy of it on another paper. Okay, but for the scanning, you are extracting the surface of it and placing it on the computer. Okay, so that one is not going to be on the paper, but it's going to be on the computer, which can be viewed. Then later on, if you decide to print it, then you can print it on the paper. But that is the difference between the scanning and the copy. Okay, so the scanning, the scanner, the device which is used for the scanning is an input device. So you put your your data or whatever information you want to pass to the computer, then the scanner will extract that data and feed it to the computer. Then the computer is going to process it. So once it processes, it knows that it's going it's supposed to extract the uh, surface uh, look of the paper then save it as a, a soft copy on the computer which can be viewed and uh, later be used okay, so that's for the scanner then like i have explained the microphone so the microphone is also an input device so you speak over here then the computer processes it if you are doing recording the computer will save your, your your sound or your voice then later on it can be played so you can also hear it by the uh, through the speaker, which will be the output device. Then we also have the web camera. So the web camera is also used for uh, capturing image. Uh, so normally in those uh, days where you, you, you chat with uh, other people on the internet, now in the morning the many laptops already have a web camera already embedded on the at the top of their monitor so but in the those time when this is not part of the uh, laptops you need to buy a web camera so this web camera is used to capture your image so that here it will capture your image then that capturing of the image is the data then that will be fed to the computer so the computer will process it so if you are chatting with someone, that uh, uh, image, the computer processes it and through other uh, technology, it will be forwarded to the person for the person to be, to be viewing it. So that information will be output to the person at the other end, as well as you can also see the extracted image. So you can know uh, how you are looking when you see it and all those things. So that will be extracted, the computer process that data and displays on the screen for you to see your captured image then if another person is also using the webcam then the other person image will also be seen somewhere there so that's basically it so this is also an input uh, device for capturing your image which is the data which is fed to the computer for processing then we also have the camera with the same, it extracts your image, which is fed to the computer. So this is a digital camera, so it's fed to the computer for processing. Then we also have the digital data tablet. Okay, so this is also used by the artist to make, to draw. So instead of drawing on a paper, they can draw on this and save as an image or print them out. So they have colors they can choose from, and they are they use this uh, this thing, electronic pen to be drawing on this screen. Okay, 
So this is also an input uh, device. So once it's been used, this uh, is fed to the computer. You can see the output on the screen. Then we also have the electronic uh, cash register. So the electronic cash register is just similar to the keyboard. So you just press any of these parts. Then the uh, this one also have a, a processor in it. So it will process uh, your input. So if you are doing subtraction, it will process it and it will do the subtraction and give you the output on this uh, small uh, screen. Okay, so then it will give you the output of uh, the, the input to refer to it, the results, which is the output to be displayed over here. Then we also have the touch screen. So when you touch on the screen, you are then feeding the the, the device, or the, whether it's the smartphone or the touch screen the computer. So when you touch it, you are feeding it uh, with an input based on where you are touching and what you are doing, and the input you are sending to the computer as well. So touch screen is also an input device. Electronic cash register is also an input device. Digital data tablet is an input device. Digital camera is an input device. Web camera is an input device. Microphone is an input device. Uh, scanner is an input device. Parco reader is an input device. Joystick is an input device. Mouse is an input device. The keyboard is an input device. So all these input devices are used to Feed the computer with data. Okay, so based on the type of input device and the, the type of data it feeds to the computer. Okay, so either text, either image, either sound, etc. So once it feeds uh, to the computer, then the computer has to process it so that it gives out a meaningful uh, output, which is the information. Okay, then we also have the pen, so the light pen. So we also have the light pen also as an input uh, device. So whatever you do, then you write on the pad. Yeah, we also have the light pen. Then the next is the processing or performing operation on the data. So once the computer receives the data, which is the input you feed to the computer based on what you are doing, if you press the key, it's an input. You are feeding to the computer. If you move the mouse, it's an input you are feeding to the computer. If you press the right, you right click the mouse, it's an input you are feeding to the computer. If you uh, click on the left side of the mouse, it's an input you are feeding to the computer. Okay. So if you are using a touch screen, when you touch the screen, it's an input you are feeding to the computer. So those ones are inputs. You are feeding to the computer a data. So this data needs to be processed. And uh, for an ask which will be meaningful for you so that you know that oh when I was doing it, this was the output. Okay. So we use the computer process this by using the uh, central processing unit, which is called in the abbreviation CPU. Okay. So the computer has central processing units, which is like the brain of the computer, which follows instructions and directives based on the type of data it receives, so that it will process it and gives you a meaningful uh, outcome or information. So the CPU is just is like the brain of the computer. So it's also a, a crucial component for getting operations done. So all the operations in the processing of the data you feed to the computer is done by the processing unit. And the processing unit is, uh, is enclosed by the system unit. So the system unit has the central processing unit to, uh, do, to process the data. So this is an example of your CPU, central processing unit. Uh, it's created by Intel. It is an example. So the CPU chip in the system unit is responsible for processing data into information. 
and some of these chips are we have the AMD processors, we have the Intel processors. Okay. So once the data is being fed, these processors process those data and put mainly into those data. So processing can be done by using various processing software and computer system depending upon the requirement. So based on the requirement, based on the data that is being fed to the computer and the software or the computer system that will be used to process that data in order to have an output which is meaningful to the user which the user understands it. Okay, so once data is being fed to the computer, the system un uh, system units by uh, by the central processing unit process that information. Now it can be saved somewhere. Okay, so it can be saved on the computer like the addix. So if we also have the uh, pen drives, we have, we have the uh, micro SD card, we have the compact disk, etc. So all these ones we can save uh, that information onto it. Okay, so once uh, we've saved the information, some information so are not saved, but it's just being displayed. So if the information is necessary to be saved, to it will also be saved. Okay. So after processing, then we also have the output, which is the result obtained or the information. So the result obtained needs to be uh, shown to the user that, okay, this was the input you gave me and I process it and this is what came out of it. So when you are using the computer, and you are seeing something on the screen. It's because uh, the data you pass, whatever you do on the uh, on the input part of the computer, it's being processed and being displayed. So the display of this information is done by output devices. So we are going to look at some of these output devices. Okay. So we have the monitor being an output device. So this is the outcome and the raw data provided in the first stage is now processed. So once you process the uh, data, it's useful, provide information, no longer called data. So this might be further used for data visualization. So, okay, so once you process it, it's no longer called data, but it's called information. Now you need to display or output this information to the screen or paper. So output device can be a paper on the form of display screen such as monitors or phone screen. Okay. And some of these output uh, devices are monitor. So this is a monitor. I believe you know what a monitor is. Okay. So when you have your uh, system unit, you connect it to the monitor, then you can see what is happening in the computer. Okay. So this is uh, the monitor. Then we also have the projector, which is similar to the monitor. So you can use a projector without a monitor. So the projector also works like just like a uh, monitor. So you just shoot it to uh, a screen. It can be a wall, a white wall, or any other this surface that you want to shoot the out output to it then it will be shown. Okay. So we have the monitor, we have the projector, we are testers. So projector and monitor, they are all output devices. Okay. Then we also have the printer. Okay. So the printer displays in the form of a paper, on the form of a paper. So it gives the output on the form of a paper. So this is a printer. Then we also have the speakers. So like I said, if you have you are recording your voice. Okay, so the microphone is the input device. It takes in, it, uh, it, it takes your voice and feed it to the computer. So the computer will process it. Then the computer will save it somewhere. Then once it's being played, it will be output to the, uh, speaker. Okay, so the speaker is also an output device. Okay, so basically, these are some of the 
output devices. So you have the computer monitor, we have the projector, then we have the printer, then we have the speakers. Okay, so all these ones are output devices. Then we are going to end with how the computer transforms data. So how the computer transforms data. So this is just a summary of all that we have done. So you need the data before you can get information. Now, data is being prepared to the computer through input devices. So each of the input devices and the type of data they feed to the computer. So if you press a key on the keyboard, you are feeding the computer with data. If you move the mouse, you are feeding the computer with data. If you press the right click on the mouse, you are feeding the computer with data. If you click on the mouse, you are feeding the computer with data. If you, you are, you connected a microphone to your computer and you are speaking, you are feeding the computer with data. If you are using a joystick to play a game, video game, now once you press on those, any of those parts, you are feeding the computer with data. Okay, so all those input devices that you are using, you are feeding the computer with data. So the computer is going to process those information. So once it receives it, it's being changed into a language which the computer understands. And this we call it machine language. Okay, so those of you that you have programming as your career, so later on when you are in your uh, senior high school or you are in the tertiary, more lights will be shown on the machine language. And what you should know is that the machine, the computer doesn't understand our English language. Okay, so if I, if I'm speaking in English, the machine doesn't understand. So my language needs to be translated to the machine language so that the machine will be able to understand uh, the language. And this, the language the machine speaks is what we think refer to as the machine language. But if you've done binary in your, uh, in the mass course, you uh, know binaries are made up of zeros and one. So that is the language the machine speaks. So if I speak in English, it needs to be converted into a binary code to so the machine to understand. So if I if if I press one, that one needs to be converted to binary codes so that the machine understands that it is one that I have pressed. Okay. So the machine uh, understands its language, which we refer to as the binary codes. So once you you uh, you pass you feed the computer with your input device. Is being changed into a machine language in order for the machine to understand it. So once the machine understands, it's it processes it based on the requirements or the type of data it is. Okay. So once it's being processed, we know uh, where it's being processed. We said the central processing unit is responsible for processing the data we we feed the computer. So the central processing unit process the data. So changing the data into what? Once the data is being converted, it's no longer data. It becomes what? Information. So this information is now useful to the user. So it needs to be displayed for the user to fully understand what it is because it has been processed so the user can understand. So once it has been processed, it's been output the user using the output devices so just like we talk about some of the output devices like the monitor or the printer okay so in this case using this uh, to summarize it so let's say for example even though this computer is on let's assume the computer is on okay so when you press on any part of the mouse Okay, you are feeding the computer with a data. When you move it, or you press, or whatever you do, okay, you are feeding the computer with a data. So the computer 
with the help of the central processing unit okay to analyze and process the data okay so like the uh, whatever is being happened it will be done in the binary core the machine language that the machine understands so when it understands it process what uh, based on the data you pass it process it now it change the processing is changing the data you pass into an uh, information so once it has changed it into an information it said information is meaningful and useful so it means that now you can the user can understand the information so now it can display to the user so it use the output devices to display this uh, information to the user okay so in the display based on the kind of information it want to release and the type of output device is going to use for example if it's going to be a voice which is the output so based on what you are doing the output is going to be a voice then it's going to use the speaker as the output device okay if what you are doing you need a hard copy of that information then it's going to be the printer as the output device because they to be printed on a paper so we need a printer for that okay now if you want uh, to just show it on the screen then we need a monitor show that information on the screen okay so i believe you are okay with this with uh course okay so you should be able to define the term data now you should be able to define information now you should be able to differentiate between the data and information now you should be able to also state the steps involving information processing cycle you should also be able to know what information processing cycle means now you should be able to list at least three input devices three story devices and three output devices and you should be able to know uh, the component in the computer which is responsible for processing any data you input to the computer okay now if you want to chat with me you can log in to your pool chat account if you don't have an account you can just sign up so once you click you log in or you sign up there will be a, a chat with an instructor here so when you click on it you can just chat with me on the main page on the main page there's chat with an instructor but you can also leave a comment over here so if you want to comment maybe you have a question you want to ask or further explanation now remember the commenting you can either use your nickname or your actual name so that's a bit two of it so don't be shy so you can decide to use a nickname nobody knows who that person is so uh, for a nickname your picture is not even going to be shown okay so nobody will know that you are the one who is asking that question so any question that you want to ask based on what we've learned today you can post then i'll be alerted so i'll just uh, login then i also give you a reply okay so that's how wonderful good chat is so you can hide your identity so that nobody knows that it's you who's asking this question okay so if you want to answer someone then if you want to answer in your profile name or if you want to answer it also in your nickname that one is your personal decision it's up to you okay so let's take a short quick review and bring the curtain so uh this week's uh, content one okay so we said you should be able to define data we said data is a raw material or unorganized facts so if you have an organized facts that you haven't organized it yet or if you have a raw material they are called data now once you organize those facts once you organize those facts or you process those facts it's no longer called data by the square word it's called what? yes information so now it becomes an information once you organize it once you process that data it's no longer called data because now people can understand what it is people can put meaning into it 
So it's no longer called data, but it's called what? Information. So that's a difference. So like in this example that we talk about, uh, it's, it's hardly to understand what these uh, numbers are. But once you put them in the uh, organized form, then you know that oh, this is a code number. Yeah, so everyone knows that this is a code number just like this. So this is an information and this is a data. Okay, this has not been organized, but this has been organized well. So you know that it is a phone number. Okay. So you should also notice there's some of the differences between the data and information. At least you should know one differences, one difference between data and information, or at least two differences between data and information. Okay. Now the process of changing the data or the steps of changing the data into an information is what we call information processing cycle okay so there are steps that needs to be taken for the data to be processed for it to have what for you to see that information so the steps involved is what we call information processing cycle so changing the data into an information or the steps that is involved is what we call information processing cycle okay now we said the steps are what first you need to feed the computer with the data so based on what you are doing the type of input device we want to use okay so feeding the computer with the data we use the input device okay now as the computer once the computer receives it you need to know uh, what uh, components of the computer is used to process your data and what did we say that component is can you guess did you get it correct yes cpu central processing unit this cpu is in the system unit so it's used to process the received data so based on the type of data and the processing it does and the software it needs to use so once the data have been worked on and is now transformed or converted into a meaningful information now what's the next step okay now it's ready for the user to what see that information so it's been outputted we output it to the user so to output it to the user be using any of the output devices you can use a projector you can use a monitor you can print it out so based on what you are doing and the type of output device you want to use so that now the user will understand uh, that data uh, the, that data now so that you can see the summary so input process output then if uh, what you are doing you need to save then you can save the uh, data and use it for the subsequent in the future to use it in the future and we use this as an example to explain uh, the process so in this example the barcode reader is an input device so we use it to take the input device we feed it to the computer the computer process is using a central processing unit with any other uh, softwares uh, that this means when once that uh, data which was taken here has been processed into an information which is useful or meaningful to the user then we can print it out or we can also see it on the screen before we even issue the print command okay so at that part is what we have the output now if you want to save it then this is also saved somewhere on the computer or in the storage data center somewhere okay so that's it and these are the input devices we have the keyboard we have the mouse we have uh, the joystick you should be able to identify all of them then we have the barcode reader or qr code reader then we have the scanner we have the microphone then we have the uh, web camera then we have the digital camera then we have the digital data tablets then we also have the electronic cash register then the touch screen then we also have the light pen okay so all these ones are input devices then when you come to the processing steps it's done by the cpu okay and the cpu has a chip 
uh, in it and the chip you have the AMD processors we have the Intel processors okay now we have the storage devices so the storage devices stores the process information so you can store it in the RAM random access memory which is the RAM or you can so store, uh, store it on the addix or you can store it on the external drive okay so later on in uh, year 2 VHS 2 we will learn about storage devices so all these storage devices we will consider in the year 2 but I believe you know what uh, USB drives are or pen drive I think you, you know, you've been watching movies so by now I think most of you know what a pen drive is because normally you store those movies on the pen drive okay so those ones are storage devices so once the information has been processed then it could also be stored on any of these uh, devices then you have the output devices then you have the output devices so you have the computer monitor you have the projector then you have the printer you have the speakers okay then we talk about how the computer transform data we said when it receives the input device it changes it to a, a language that the machine understands then this is being processed by the cpu the cpu work on the data and convert it to a meaningful information and now that the information is useful and meaningful to the user to be displayed on the screen using any of the output devices okay so based on the type of output and the device which will be used for a sound if you use a speaker it is going to be outputted on the paper to use the printer it's going to be outputted on the screen and to use the monitor okay so thank you very much for taking this uh week uh course content and you should be able to answer any of these questions then like i said if you have a question you can just post your question if you want to chat with me too, when you go to the main page of the course, when you go to the main of the course, you will see chat with an instructor. So if you click on home, the home page of the course, you will see login to chat with an instructor. So you just log in. Once you log in, it will give you at the bottom. Okay. So here, yeah, once you log in, it will give you a button you can click and you can chat with me okay so you can just send me a message i can apply if you want a further understanding okay so thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day bye and see you next week